Hello everybody and welcome to Lesson 8 of the Ben and Boz Microsoft Excel video tutorial series. I'm Boz. I'm Ben. What's going on today, man? It's a beautiful day in Collegeville and we get to talk about retirement stuff today. We do. Well, kind of some finance related topics using Excel, which I know yeah, we both really like. It's going to be one of my favorites. And even though this is more accounting focused, yeah. it's okay to do this. It's going to be worth your time. Absolutely. So we are going to, in our goals, we're going to learn how to use the input cells, lock some cell references, as well as three different future value related formulas. Yeah. So specifically locking the cells on both a PC or a Mac, editing selected cells, calculating future values, payment amounts, and number of periods. Should be a good one. Oh yeah. Let's get right into it here. So we have three examples that we're going to go through. Um, each of those is going to have one of those features Ben just referred to. The first one is investing. So we have a problem that just says, if I invest 5000 per year at the end of the next five years, how much will I have after five years, assuming a 7% interest rate? I always like to start at these, Ben, and uh, just say, when we're going to compute an answer. We know it has to be what? Do you know where I'm going with this one? At least $25,000. grand. Yep. So just <laughs> keep that in mind whenever you start w working with these formulas. We're going to show two ways to do this one. One is definitely the slower approach, um, but it, it'll just kind of show you how it builds up. And then the second will be the shortcut approach to this. So the beginning amount, what do you think there, Ben? What should I put in this one? So beginning Zero. Amount, we zero. don't have anything right now. We're going to start at the end of this year. So if you don't have anything, are you going to earn any interest on it? I would say no. <laughs> We're still going to uh, basically put in a, a formula so it's ready to go when we do have something there. So in cell B9, we're going to type equals. We're going to link up to the beginning amount. We're going to hit multiply, and we're going to go up to that 7%. And for now, I'm just going to hit enter. Ooh, we set, I feel like you're setting us up for, it, <laughs> for a change down the road here. We're teasing. So the total that we're going to have before we make any contribution uh, is, is still going to be um, uh, zero here. It's interesting. I actually hit alt equals, our quick way to sum it up. And you, know, you notice that it's also pulling in that year number one. So I just need to manually change that with an arrow key. All right, and then I will do a shift arrow key to control what I want. Uh, my contribution at the end of this year, all right, uh, I've got it shown as a negative $5,000 kind of a cash outflow is what, we, uh, is what we have going here. So I will link up to that one, uh, link up to that contribution uh, of the negative $5,000. My total then after the contribution, alt equals, and if I sum up the two previous cells, my total after the contribution will be a negative 5,000. All right, let's actually, let's make one shift, if you don't mind. Sure. Um, that, that negative 5,000, in some ways it makes sense to be negative because this is what you're paying every single year. And when we get down to the shortcut method, we're going to want to have that as a negative to show what we have at the end. Yep. But for this example, it makes more sense to look at that contribution as a positive. Think sure. of it as in the cells that you're working at right now. That's like how much we've accumulated. So what I would do is just shift that formula in B11 to say equals negative B4. That makes sense. And, you, and you're going to see below we refer to the contribution uh, as a negative, And that's why we have the annual amount as a negative 5,000 right here. All right, so we get into year two, and in cell C8, uh, I will... Uh, Zero, right? Because that's what it was last time? <laughs> well, we do have a beginning amount, right? At the, at the start of year one, we didn't have a beginning amount, but at the start of year two, we actually do. So we link down to B12, oh. and now our interest earned. What do you suppose I should do? I already have my formula in here, huh? Well, I imagine you should just copy and paste it, and it should work, right? Absolutely. With Excel? I'll do my control. Did my control R thing? Wait, you're more of a mental happened. math guy. 5,000 times 7% <laughs> should be more than zero, right? Man, what happened in that one? I can look at my formula. C8 times C5. Is that not good anymore? What, what happens if you double click on cell C9? Double click on cell C9. Okay. You want me to just go on there and double click it? All right. I'm bringing up a formula then. Oh, okay. So taking 5,000 makes sense, but I see that red box popped up. Yeah. And now it's going to. 
sell C5, which is just nothing. That should really be 7%. Yeah, it should. So we need to lock down the interest rate. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to sell B9. And it's actually interesting that you said double click on it, all right, because that's one of our learning points for today. You can edit by going in here with a double click. The other way you can do it is just by hitting F2, which might just be a little bit quicker. Definitely is a little faster there. Yep, yep. And then what you want to do, we're good with the B8 because we want that to carry over. But the B5, um, I want to hit an F4. Uh, We can refer to this as either locking down that cell or anchoring it. Do you prefer one of those versus the other? You're making that cell money. (laughs) Because you see the little dollar size that (laughs) popped up there. More money. And so... I've seen this quite a bit in class, actually. You do not hit the little dollar signs next to the B, next to the 5. It'll work, Mm -hmm. but that takes way longer. So just remember this one. F4 if you're on a PC. Command shift T if yep. you're on a Mac. Yep. yep. So, yeah. So Ben's point, you could type those in, but and usually when I'm doing this, I just put both dollar signs. It's gonna lock down both the B and the five as I go to different cells. If I only wanted to lock down the five, uh, the row, I would hit an F4 again. If I only wanted to lock down the B, the column, I'd hit F4 again. If I decided I didn't want to lock down anything, I could hit F4 again, but just it's just easy. I usually just default and I just lock down them both because that serves my purposes. And now when I go to the right with a control R, you can see I earn some interest. Uh, so if you hit F2 over that 350, yeah. we just get the visual there. Okay, so you see now it is the beginning amount is moving, move from column one to column two, but mm-hmm. the interest rate is still at 7%. It didn't shift with your formula because you locked it down. Yep. Cool. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, Now, the total before the contribution, I have a formula in there that works, so I can just paste that over with a control R. My contribution, once again, if I just try to paste this over with a control R, we can see it's not locked down, so it's trying to feed off of cell C4, and there's nothing there. So what do you suppose I should do, Ben? I'd go back to cell B11, and then F2 to edit it, and then F4 to lock it down. All right, F4, lock it down. Now when I paste that over with a control R, it's good my total after the contribution i paste that over with a control r that is also good we more than doubled our investment we did one year we did we did because of the concept of interest now you can see i was individually doing control r's to paste things over once i have a model set that i'm good just to kind of run with now i can grab everything at once so i'm going to go up to cell c8 hit my shift control down I'm capturing all of that. I'm going to hold down shift. I'm going to arrow key three times to the right, and then I will just hit control R, and now my whole model is done. So I that- think we'd have 28,754, and hey, that's more than 25,000. So, so put it this way. What I always like to say with that is there's no guarantee that that's right, but we have a shot at being right. If this bottom uh, number had been less than 25 grand, we would have known something was messed up. Um, and what's be- what- What's beautiful about this, and these are the concepts of input cells. There's no Excel shortcut for the input cells. You know, if we're back in the instructions, we talked about uh, using input cells. But there's no shortcut for it or anything. But we use it so that we can easily change these amounts uh, in, or rates or whatever you're putting in there to give you different results. So what do you think, Ben? So an interest rate of 7%, you know, do you want to change it? What else could we change it to for fun? So, 10%. Okay, maybe you're going to be a little bit more aggressive. All right, put in 10%. Now instead of having 28 grand, you have over 30 grand. It uh, paid off. Yeah, it did. Maybe someone wants to be conservative, right? You're going to put in a 3% interest rate. You know, not as much interest still, some of it. You could also change, you know, sometimes I like to really make things pop with large amounts and I could you know change the uh change the amounts change the interest rates uh we we all of a sudden have some very large uh, some very large figures there so i will just pull it back to minus five thousand and seven percent sweet all right now that is the long way to do it and in the real world oftentimes your cash flows aren't easy uh, excuse me aren't even every year so it does make sense to do it but if you do have even cash flows you can shortcut it here and using this future value formula so, Ben, just give me the inputs on this one as I go through so I don't have to think. So yeah, rate. absolutely. Rate was at 7%. All right. The number of periods was 5. All right. The payment is negative 5000 All right. And keep that one negative because it's like we're paying into this investment vehicle. All right. And our present value is zero because it's not worth anything to us right now. Mm-hmm. So we have our inputs right there. Now we put in the future value calculation equals 
FV, and I will hit tab to make Ben excited. I appreciate that. Thank you. <laughs> it tells me, and it gives me a little guidance right, right here. It gives me guidance. It says, go up to the rate, hit comma. Now go up to the number of periods, hit comma. Go up to the payment, hit a comma. Go to present value, hit a comma. And now the, the type on this one, you want to address this one for a minute? It says zero for end of the period, one for beginning of the period. So what, what happens with this is if you make your contribution at the beginning of the period, say January 1st, you contributed $5,000, that means for all of that year, you're earning interest on it. So it's like you get an extra period. If you make the contribution at the end of the year, say December 31st, it's still in the same year, but it didn't have any chance to earn interest during that year. Yep. And so this problem, it's said at the end of the period, which is what we're using. In real life, you could use a zero or it could be a one, just really depends on your situation. Sounds good. So we uh, assumed end of the period here, we put that in and look at that. We've got a future value that matches within round. Well, it's, it, it, it's gonna match completely. It's just a rounding issue. I expanded the decimal and we've got the future values are the same. And no then, way. Yeah, it's cool. It, it must've just been a coincidence. <laughs> coincidence of Excel formulas or whatever you wanna say. To Ben's point, he was just chatting about it without getting into it too long, but you know, had we changed it to beginning of the period investing, we put in a one right there, we would end up with some more, which I think, and I'm making this up on the fly, but if I put in 5,000 right here and I deleted 5,000 right there, thank goodness that worked. It's always it nice when I make up. matches up. <laughs> make up something on the fly that Sometimes works. you take a risk and it pays off. He's off, yeah. So, but for end of the end of the period, that's just what we're going to do. Nice. All right. So that's the future value formula. Anything else you wanted to say, or should we move into retirement and payment? One of my all-time favorite topics is retirement here. Well, we love to teach it just because it hooks the students, right? Because when they have long time frames to invest, compound interest really pays off, right? Exactly. And so in this one, it looks like we're going to be doing the amount to save each year. So you're telling me we're going to figure out, hey, here's how much we want. And Excel is going to be able to tell us, here's what you need to save in order to get to that amount. That's what, yeah, that's, I think that's what we're going to do. That's, that's cool. So someone wants to 30 years from now have 2 million bucks. What do they got to save each year? Assuming a 7% interest rate. $100 <laughs> per I'm year. Gonna, I'm going to guess higher than $100, but I guess there's only one way to find out. Ooh. So 7% interest rate the future value amount i'm going to enter that as a positive because that's a cash flow we're going to receive in the future i put in 20 million f that was not on purpose but i this, wouldn't mind 20 million that's <laughs> fine with me you could change it right but here's an example where I, I put it in and now i hit f2 to edit it and uh, uh take one of those zeros out the time period is going to be 30 years so now the amount to save each year equals PMT, and it's the first one that pops up, so I'll hit tab. All right, so my rate. Thank you, boss, for hitting tab there. Yeah, I appreciate you know, it. I'm, I'm learning from you, man. We learn from each other. So I go to the rate, and I hit on the 7%, and, and then I'll hit comma. Number of periods, I'll go to the 30s. Present value, do we have anything? We don't sort of have anything right now. If you did have something sure. saved already for retirement, that's where you'd enter this amount in here, but we sure. don't, so... I do a zero, or you could probably just hit another comma as well to oh, skip sure. that argument. All right. Yep. So we'll put in the zero there, the future value amount, two million as a positive number. And then once again, it's how much do we want to save? Are we going to assume that we're going to make our contributions at the end of the year? So just put in a zero. Sure. Why not? Whichever way. It, it certainly would change the answer. So you just have to decide when you want to do it. So we would have to save 21 grand a year. And you notice this one is shown as a negative, meaning yeah. you'll have to contribute that amount to a retirement account yep. in order to get to 2 million bucks. Yeah. So, that, I mean, this is a cool one because, you know, we teach this in the classroom to, you know, oftentimes this is to 18, 19 year olds, right? Who might have 45 years to retirement. So we can go ahead and change this to 45 years. Now, look at that. The number becomes much more palatable at that point in time. Only about seven grand per year. What, what happens if we go back to uh, 30 for the mm -hmm. time period yeah. and then we change the amount to save each year in that payment formula to making our contributions at the beginning of the year? So sure. put a one in there instead yeah. of a zero at the well, very end. Well, we know end. because we're making it at the beginning, we're going to earn interest longer. So the only thing we know is the number has to go down, right? So it used to be, what, 21,000 and change. Now it's a little under 20 grand. So, right. uh, so yeah, this is an Excel lesson but finance tip invest earlier you let that interest work for you that's a pretty cool one what else we got the last one is uh, 
<laughs> this one's less cool. All right. I'll let you take one. care of this one. We you should have done this. this one first and ended on retirement a happier note, but student loans. Uh, so let's, but it's important, right? So let's say um, someone has student loans of 50 grand. They're going to pay an interest rate of 6%. How long will it take to pay off the loans if they pay 5,000 per year? So that's what they've run on their budget. All right. Present value, um, which should we put an amount in for this one then? Would you Probably say? 50 grand All because right. we owe 50 grand. This is today we're paying, or the student loan balance is as of today, not a future time. All right, the payment, uh, uh, the payment amount, what should I do here? Let's do a negative yep. 5,000 for the payment amount because we have to pay that out of our pockets, a cash outflow. This would not have worked had we put in uh, 5,000 as a positive number. I'm pretty sure it would have came a nonsensical result. It, yeah, it wouldn't have worked and you would notice that right away when you do the formula yeah. and then it's okay, something's gotta totally. change. Any future value we're gonna have? Hopefully any? zero because we paid them all off. That's Hopefully the we get here. rid of those student loans. Um, the interest rate, 6%. And then the number of periods uh, equals NP. Ooh, and look at this, Ben. I'm not even going to type the whole thing in. I see that it's going to it right now, NPER. I'm going to hit tab right now. You saved so much time. <laughs> I did. <laughs> Two go letters up. and an open parenthesis. Absolutely. Go up to the interest rate, comma. Go up to the payment, comma. Go up to the present value of the 50 grand, comma. Go up to the future grand, comma. And we'll say that you're going to make these payments at the end of the year. So that is going to be zero. Close parentheses. And it is going to take you 15 years and some change to pay that off. You know, again, Ben and I are all about making things a little bit cleaner. So I'd probably just hit the comma uh, one time and uh, 15 years and roughly nine months. Cool. So what do you think? You want to take 15 years to pay off your loans or what do you, you know, how could you use Excel here? I don't. Well, what you could do is what if you mess with that payment input cell a little sure. bit? So let's change the payment to uh, 8,000. 8,000. All right. Wow. Eight years. We cuts like it, almost cuts it cut it in, in half. half. Not quite, but pretty close. We didn't even double half. the payment, but it cut it in half just because of the power of compounding uh, interest that way. Pretty power sweet. Uh, let's just see. Did we cover everything that we wanted to? Uh, so we locked the cell reference down. We edited the cells. We learned three uh, kind of finance related functions. Any closing thoughts? These are some pretty fun functions that we covered today. Fun functions. You might call them fun functions. <laughs> It's an awesome one. Well, thanks everyone for tuning in to lesson eight of the Ben and Boz Microsoft Excel video tutorial series. We'll be back for lesson nine next time. Thanks everyone. We'll talk to you next time.